Hi everybody, it's me again, Marty the Off Grid Gecko. Um, I'm doing a lot of things today, lots of irons in the fire. Um, but one thing that I'm doing is cooking down this live water. Um, I did a video on lye, I may have done a couple videos on actually potash and lye and some of the differences and things that people screw up, things that people get right. Um, but today I'm basically purifying, so my raw potash which was made by leaching ashes from the wood stove and then just basically take the water from the leach water and set it on top of the wood stove and let it boil down and cook overnight or throughout the course of a couple of days or whatever and it turns into this um, and I call this raw potash and some of this has been calcined also so I put it back in a really hot fire after it's been dried and the salt's been collected to like reheat and really burn off any kind of organic impurities that might be in the in the leach water with this but for the most part that's it's kind of a here and there sort of issue but anyways um i had two of these and i basically took one dissolved it in some more rain water and now i'm purifying the potash into potassium carbonate through recrystallization that's what it's called so essentially it's the same process, right? You soak this in water and then, and actually you're going to dissolve it all this time. It's not like soaking the ashes where you get a lot of stuff left over. Like everything in here should dissolve unless you got some impurities or there was some leftover calcium carbonate in there or silica or whatever that got into your potash. Um, this should be pretty, pretty pure as far as being a bunch of salts that will dissolve easily. So you dissolve it and then you basically cook it down um, and you have to keep watching it. This isn't, it's not a 10 minute experiment. I'm not going to show you all the steps behind me because there's no point in me making several video segments on this when I can explain it to you. So basically you dissolve this in enough water to dissolve all of it. And there's about 500 grams in here. Um, at least there was in the other one that I cooked. Just depending on how finely it's chopped up will make a difference. Um, and you put that pot on the fire. Now what you're going to want to do when you're refining it is to actually get rid of some of the salts that are not potassium carbonate. Now potassium has a very high solubility, so you can dissolve a whole bunch of it in water, um, as you'll kind of see here in a second when I show you this. Um, there are other salts in there. There are chlorides. Mostly the chlorides are the ones that are going to drop out first. That's what you're going to be looking for. There's calcium chloride, which is rock salt. There's sodium chloride, which is table salt. There's um, some other carbonates in there besides potassium. So there's going to be some sodium carbonate in there, which you could use to make um, modern live proper sodium hydroxide. Um, there's potassium carbonate, which is the stuff that we want, and that's our potash, which some people often call lye. And it's a here and there. Watch the other video. I go into way too many details on that in there. Um, but so what you're going to do is when you, as you start to boil this, you'll notice like some sediment will start forming at the bottom at some point during the boiling process. So you've already dissolved all the stuff in water. If you dissolve it in hot water, it'll go faster. Um, and then you start to boil it down or simmer it down would be better than actually boiling. I can't even get this thing to boiling with that much water in a pot, so that doesn't matter to me. But if you've got a modern stove, you don't really want it like bubbling and churning and splashing caustic liquid in your face. Um, just simmer it down or a little less than a simmer where the steam's coming off, it's drying out, but it's not splashing. Um, and as you continue to look into it, you might need a flashlight because it's, it can be kind of a yellowish or reddish color sometimes. Um, shine that down in there, look at the bottom of your pot and you will see like little, they look like little puddles of salt in the bottom or little, little furry things almost. Like there's just little, little mounds and hills that'll form in random spots. Sometimes they look like a big snake or, um, waves in the desert or whatever. Like, those are your chlorides dropping out of solution because the concentration of that potassium carbonate, that, um, that actual potash proper or pearl ash, as it's known, is basically taking up all the water space so there's no room left for those other salts. So they start dropping out. When you see that, 
make a mark on the side of your pot or take any kind of measurement you can because you want to reduce the water from that point by half. And what this is going to do is it's going to get out all or most of those less soluble salts without taking too much of your pot ash with it or your pearl ash with it. Um, once you've got it to that point and you've simmered it down halfway from where you started seeing those little uh, precipitates, you know, the little salts appearing in the bottom, um, you boil it down about halfway from there. And if you go a little too far, you might even see a little scale forming on top of the liquid. That is going to be your potassium salts trying to come out of the solution. And it's going to be doing the same thing that this is doing on the pot behind me. So when you get to that point, while it's still hot, um, you can go ahead and stir it up a little. If it's got that film on the top, just stir it up, get it mixed back in there, turn the heat off, and you immediately want to filter it. Um, you can filter it or you can decant it, either one. You're not going to get too much of those other salts if you just kind of pour it off carefully and you leave some of the water back. Like when you see those salts start coming over with what you're pouring out, that means time to stop or time to grab a filter paper or some cloth or something like that. That way you can separate those salts permanently from your hot solution. Now you set that hot solution out to dry and another salt is going to, or to cool rather, another salt is going to drop out of it at that point. So there are two salts that are in there that are really, really soluble. There may be more than that, but you know, and you're going to have organic impurities too. But your two main salts are going to be potassium carbonate, and I believe the other one is calcium chloride. Um, this is in, if you've heard of caveman chemistry, I think that guy's got some of his numbers wrong on the solubility chart because on checking his numbers, like, there's some things that don't quite add up and they don't match, like, the solubility numbers that I was able to research off PubChem and a couple other places. So based on my research, that other salt that's coming out should be calcium chloride. That should be rock salt. And it will happen as it cools down. That stuff will drop out because even though it's very, very soluble when it's hot, when the liquid's hot, when it cools down, it's not very soluble. And you've got enough potassium carbonate in there taking up that space and it's much more soluble that it's going to, the water's going to hang on to that pot, the pearl ash and it's going to drop the rock salt. Okay, so then you filter it again while it's cold. And you should have a solution of pure enough, we'll call it, potassium carbonate. It'll be 80% plus guaranteed, probably 90 to 95% plus. And if you refine it using the same sort of method a couple more times, you can get it to USP purity if you wanted to. We don't need to take it that far for soap making. So let me show you what's going on over here before I run out of video time and my camera dies on me. So it looks like a little monster in there growing of some sort. That is the salts that are coming out. And you can see instead of dropping to the bottom, they form the scale on the surface. And that actually inhibits the liquid from coming off. So you got to come back to this every so often and mix it up. But eventually you will get to a point where... I mean, and you can see that scale forms instantly at this point. So this is where I'm going to just have to keep stirring it and pulling it up until it dries out all the way. And then I'm going to make sure to keep heating it and stirring it so I can get all the water out as much as possible. Um, and then, of course, I can scrape this off the glass, put it in an airtight jar if you have one, because this stuff is actually it loves being dissolved so much it'll suck moisture straight out of the air and it will dissolve itself um so it that's one thing it can be used as as a desk can if you've got an area you need to keep dry and it's sealed up pretty good you put some of this dry stuff in there in a little cup or something and it will soak any remaining water out of the air so it's uh like silica gel in that regard but yeah, I just come around, keep stirring it and stirring it and stirring it and until we can get all that water out that we can. And then we'll be left with a dry version of this, which you can see when it dries out, it's really, really white. So this color you're seeing, this caramel color, this is, um, these are 
most likely organic impurities. We can get rid of some of those by calcining this or bringing it up to a really high temperature after it dries just to smoke it out and drive any remaining water off as well. But that's something more chemical for another time when I care. And that's pretty much the process of recrystallization. So it's one of these things where you want to dissolve it again the potash that you already have and by removing the water in fractions and using different temperatures to your advantage you can actually separate the material that you're after from all the other impurities that are in or most of the other impurities that are in the product now nothing is going to be a hundred percent pure um, even a laboratory setting a hundred percent purity is darn near impossible um, because impurities just tend to go along with things that are a part of life. USP, I think, on this kind of chemical is right at 99%. It might be 99.9%. Um, so even USP is not 100%, you know, down to a thousandth of a part per million or something like that. It's, it's actually got a lot of impurities left in it. Doing it this way, the impurities that are left behind are sort of natural, and they're from the wood ash as well or from the water or whatever um, whereas in a laboratory they're going to use specific chemicals to drive the purity of the substance up as high as possible while um, you know making sure that the impurities are either specific to a certain task like for a food grade substance it would be something edible and safe to eat or if they're just hell-bent on getting the impurity up like purified water often has a very highly toxic chemical in it to get it to the degree of purity that it is but it's you know that it's such a trace amount that they can have a higher purity like water for doing neutrino testing underground in underground laboratories and water tanks and like scanning the cosmos for neutrinos and things like that requires a very very high degree of purity and they don't care whether there's a toxic chemical in there or not as long as the water's pure enough so what those impurities do is they replace other impurities by several orders of magnitude and so you're left with a more pure product but you've got some different trace elements in there as impurities that's my speech on purity and refining and like I said, you can actually recrystallize this, carry it through the same process again and again and again. You can take the white salt when you're done outside and burn it in a really, really hot fire in like a steel dish or a cast iron dish to burn up any organic material that's left will leave as smoke. Um, and then redo the process again. If you do it a second time, you're probably going to get this pretty close to 99% pure. Um, if not much higher so it's a little bit of a labor process but if you're looking for a more pure more consistent result and you still want to use natural stuff this is pretty much the way to do it naturally there were actually small refineries for making this kind of pearl ash and I don't remember what they were called they had a really cute name like a ashery I think in the 17 1800s and earlier times and it's like to manufacture this before they figured out they could get it from a rock somewhere um, and just mine it out of the ground so yeah it's a fun project not really super necessary for anything but everything around here I'm trying to use what I have to make things that I need versus going out and you know buying everything so sometimes a little more labor intensive a little more energy intensive but at the end of the day i know that i'm making things from scratch from as scratch as i could possibly make them so and that is part of my pursuit of knowledge and that's just specific to me so um if that's your thing that's basically uh potash refining in a nutshell to make pearl ash from potash if you like this kind of stuff, don't forget to subscribe. I get a little scientific at times because I'm schooled in physics. 
and I like things like that. So I try to convey some of that knowledge as best I can without getting into too many of the nitty gritty little details. And of course, you know, just click the subscribe button if you're bored too, because every bit helps. If you know somebody that would be interested in this kind of thing or is thinking about making their own pearl ash so that they can make potassium soaps, um, go ahead and send them over to the video. Tell them to check it out. Um, there's another potash video on here somewhere. I will try and remember to link it in the comments. Sometimes I forget to do that, but um, if I can find it, I'll try and link it in the comments. And if I remember, of course, when I'm uploading this, because it may be three days from now, who knows, depending on how the internet behaves with me tonight. You hear that sizzling noise? It's all those last little water molecules trying to escape. So I'm going to get on stirring this guy until it's dry, and then I'm going to get on to rendering some soot. So I'll see you guys next time. Stay safe out there, and uh, don't forget to come back for more. Later.